day everyone and today we're going to discuss about the existential psychology of Rulo May. The overview Life is like a puzzle piece where you have to find your life. Just like existentialism, an idea of Rulo May who was the foremost spokesperson in the United States. His approach was based on clinical experience and not based on any scientific research. Existentialism, according to Rulo May, is a feeling of anxiety and fear. It is a necessary experience of personal growth. This idea focuses on the concept of freedom as the pinnacle of human existence. So next, we have here the background. So Rulo May was born on April 21, 1909 in Ada, Ohio. May studied English from Michigan State and earned his bachelor's degree from Overland College, Ohio. After graduation, May taught English in Salonica, Greece, and while there, he traveled to attend seminars presented by Alfred Adler. May enrolled in Columbia College University to pursue a PhD in clinical psychology. Rulo May was the influential American psychologist who helped establish a new branch of psychology called existential psychology. May came up with existentialism to personal hardship. His earliest career education started with with English and theology. He spent his earliest career teaching English abroad. However, May had tuberculosis, a bacteria, lung infection, and was hospitalized several years. During this time, May began to explore the meaning of life and death. This curiosity eventually led to study clinical psychology, where in fact, he was the recipient of the first PhD in clinical psychology granted by Columbia University. And next is the background of existentialism. So, what is existentialism? Existentialism is searching for the meaning of man's life as well as its purpose. The main focus of this idea is the existence and freedom where such as anxiety of human individual queued up by a threat to some value that holds the essential apprehension of the existence as part of personality. The study of existentialism is for people to become more aware of their chosen pathways, freedom of decisions, and the result of certain circumstances. Let's, let us say, for example, you as a person is confused whether to choose between two paths, and there are a lot of disturbances around you. However, in relation to the idea of existentialism, you have to come up with the right decision. And it is your freedom to think wisely and critically with subconscious mind to have a to have a better soul. And that's the point of our life. So next we have here the case of Philip. Philip, in relation to existentialism, he illustrates his own idea by Rulo May's concepts, which is the anxiety, intentionality, destiny, psychopathology, and lastly, the psychotherapy. Philip had a wife named Nicole who had an affair with another man. 
Philip wished to accept the behavior of his wife, for he think he will not be able to search for another woman to love. In this point of his life, he was paralyzed and, and was not able to change the relationship until he sought therapy from Rulumi. It's It was a great idea for existentialism is a therapy for a person who suffer anxiety, stress, and some sort of illness that Philip had experienced. It saddens me in a way that Philip case had to be like that. But, on the other hand, it was an experience that Philip had learned from and he was he was able to seek help from Rulu May, which is a good thing. So, anxiety. People experience anxiety when they become aware that their existence might be destroyed or not valued. According to May 1981, he quoted Kierkegaard, who stated that anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. Anxiety is like dizziness wherein it can be pleasurable, painful, constructive, or disturbing, or destructive. Moreover, anxiety can be normal or neurotic. Anxiety is popular among the young generation. Why? Maybe because of personal problems, the pressure that they felt, and a lot of more which is a severe problems that needs uh, proper care and attention. Now, this is, now let us discuss the two anxiety which is include normal and neurotic anxiety based on the Rulumi's theory. So normal anxiety is experienced during the person's creative moments that leads to a recognition of one's life, whether you are an artist, a philosopher, or maybe a scientist. Uh, and next, the neurotic anxiety. On the other hand, it's a type of experience during period of growth or maybe threat to one's experiences. This is also experienced with their value, values transform and become into a dogma. To overcome anxiety, you have to deal with people who are optimistic and in many ways and turn yourself to, to a better version for you. Next, we have here the guilt. Guilt would arise when people were would deny their potentialities fail to accurately perceive the needs of individual. Guilt has three forms which is the Amwell, um, Mitlot, and Ijinwell. Both anxiety and guilt are ontological and people experience the three simultaneous modes being in the world. Ontological guilt can have either negative or positive effect on personality. So, let us discuss there is the moods of existence. The umwell, it is an objective aspect of internal and environment. Second, the midwell, the social relationship, in interpersonal relationship. And lastly, the eginwell, the self-awareness or the subjective world of the self. So next is the intentionality, an ability to make 
3 says that implies some underlying structure upon which the choice is made. Intentionality give experience and allow people to make decisions about their future. Actions imply intentionality, just as intentionality implies action. These two are inse inseparable. So, intentionality, for example, bridges the gap between object and subject in a way that using this example can relate the two. Subject is the idea, is the idea, is the structure of meaning that make it possible for us, while the object is the outside world that we see and, and understand. Let us say, for example, the man can write in the paper, fold it into a paper airplane for his grandson, or sketch in a picture on it. In all three instances, the subject, which is the man, and the object, which is the paper, are identical. But man's action depends on his intentions and on the meaning he gives to his experience. The meaning is a function of both himself and his environment. The incongruity of subject and object is partially overcome according to May 1969. The next concept of me, care, love, and will. Care is a state in which something does matter. When we love someone, we took care for them. It is because they matter. They are important for us. In joy, we took care for them. Also in pain, care is not the same as love that it is the source of love and love is a delight in the presence of the other person and an affirming of that person's value and development as much as one's own when we love someone we give so much value for that someone especially when that someone we love give us the love we want it it gives a delight in the presence, right? And there are other person who give too much value with that person than their own. Without care, there is no love. Because why would we care to someone we don't love? When we don't care to someone, he or she does not matter. We don't give value to that someone, so we don't love that. There are other person that they think that they love that person, but they don't care for that person. So it means that that is not true love, because love do care. Real. The capacity to organize oneself so that movement in a certain direction or toward a certain goal may take place. Care is also the source of feel. We need to care for someone. Is it against of our will or it is our will? Of course, when we take care for someone, it is our will to take care for them. It is because we love them. Here. Union of love and will. Our task is to unite love and will. This task is not easy, but it is possible. Neither a blissful love nor self serving will have a role in the uniting of love and will. Modern society suffers from an unhealthy division of love and will. 
love is seen as love is seen as sensual sex, or as real is seen as dull determination of real power. So what is the reasons why love and will are separated? When children come into the world, they are with their universe, their mother and themselves. As will begins to develop, it manifests itself as opposition. The no, unfortunately, is seen by the parents and gets a bleak. Child learns to dissociate will from the place of love. So that is the reason where love and will are separated. For the mature person, both love and will mean reaching out, reaching out toward another person. Both involve care, both necessitate a choice, both imply action, and both require responsibility. Union of love Forms of love may identify four kinds of love in Western tradition. Sex, Eros, Uria, and Akate. Sex is a biological function that can be satisfied through sexual intercourse or some other release of sexual protection. So I know that everyone knows this. This seeks a sexual pleasure. Eros is a psychological desire that seeks procreation or patient children during union with a loved one. It is a personal infatuation and physical pleasure. It is engaged in physical touch such as hugging or kissing. Philia It is an intimate non sexual friendship between two people. Philia cannot be rushed. It takes time to grow, to develop, to sink its roots. This kind of love is affectionate love. A love that runs deep and true friendships. And this kind of love exchanges beliefs and imperfection with close friends. Agape. It is an altruistic love. It is a kind of spiritual love that carries with it the risk of playing God. It does not depend on any behaviors or characteristic of the other person. In this sense, it is undeserved and unconditional. This kind of love is selfless love, an empathetic attitude of love for everyone and anyone. This kind of love expresses unconditional love in any situation. Freedom and destiny. May said that freedom is the individual's capacity to know that he is the determined one. The word determined in this definition is synonymous with what may would later call destiny. Freedom comes from an understanding of our destiny because when we have freedom, we are able to go where we want to go, and that is our destiny. Freedom has a possibility of changing, although we may not know what those changes might be. And it also increases anxiety, but just normal anxiety where it is manageable. There are two types of freedom, existential freedom and essential freedom, where existential freedom is the freedom of doing and the freedom to pursue goals. And the essential freedom is the freedom of being, freedom to think, to plan, and to hope. Destiny may define destiny as the design of the universe speaking through the design of each one of us. Our ultimate destiny is death. But on a lesser scale, our destiny includes other biological properties such as intelligence. Intelligence. However, you are not that smart when you were elementary, but your intelligence gains in the uh, um, senior high or in college 
wrong to not pursue destiny. If you are smart from the beginning until the end, that is for destiny. You are gender. You know, if you are a female, male, transgender, bisexual, gay, lesbian, uh, what is your destiny? Your size. Thin, fat, tall, small. That is your destiny of who you are. And strength. And also, genetic predisposition towards certain illnesses. And if you experience having cancer, that is your destiny where it will lead to death. Well, that is the ultimate destiny. In addition, psychological and cultural factors contribute to our destiny. As we challenge our destiny, we gain freedom. And as we achieve freedom, we push at the boundaries of destiny. The power of me. Conscious and unconscious belief systems that provide explanations for personal and social problems. So, me is somehow telling us that many of our social and psycholo psychological ills may be attributed to the absence of the inner security that needs give. Me proposes to show us how me can be used as tools for understanding ourselves and as maps for revealing new goals, new ethical insights, and possibilities. So the Oedipal story is a powerful myth in our culture that contain an element for existential crisis. And these crises are birth, exile and separation, insist in patricide, identity, conscious meditation and death. Where Oedipus, the king of Thebes, who unwittingly killed his father and married his mother, then Oedipus' wife, hang herself when the truth of the relationship became known, though Oedipus apparently continued to rule at service until his death. So this is a powerful myth because this is somehow common in our culture today. According to me, affected and antinous are the malice of modern times not anxiety and guilt. If a person turn away their needs or deny their destiny, they have a feeling that they don't have a purpose to live. If a person doesn't if a person deny their destiny, they don't have freedom. And when they don't have freedom there will be no destination or goal, and this will make people sick and engage in a self-destructive behavior. This is due to the lack of communication, just like for example to the case of Billy, to his relationship in her in his two wives in Nicole. It represents a denial of his freedom and a self defeating attempt to escape from his destiny. For Mace's psychotherapy, he suggested that psychotherapy should make people more human, that is, help them expand their consciousness so that they will be in a better position to make choices. These choices then lead to the simultaneous crop of freedom and responsibility. May believe that the purpose of psychotherapy is to set people free. That existential psychotherapy really may propose is a process by which people explore the existence of those individuals who ask for help. It seeks to determine said individuals' concerns and analyzes them through dialogue. Its goal is to identify prejudice and detect the things that lead to negative consequences. This type of 
psychotherapy doesn't necessarily lead to well-being, but to a more rational way of facing life. For concept of humanity of me, we trace over determinism because people have surrendered some of their ability to choose and for optimism over pessimism. Because although May sometimes painted a rather gloomy picture of humanity, May was not pessimistic. And theology over casualty. Oh, may recognize the potential impact of childhood experiences and adult personality. He clearly favored theology over casualty, consciousness, and unconscious. May assumed a moderate stance on the issue of conscious versus unconscious forces and personality development. By their nature, People have enormous capacity for self-awareness, but often that capacity remains fallow. Social and biological influences. Society contributes to personality principally through interpersonal, through, through interpersonal relationships and uniqueness of their similarities. It is because to, according to May's view of humanity, definitely leans towards uniqueness. May's emphasizes on phenom phenomenology implies individual perceptions and therefore unique personalities. And that would be all. Thank you for listening about the existential psychology of growing May.